So today I'm going to switch out from uh, lowering springs to the BC Racing DS series coilovers for my 2010 Acura TL. As you already know, my TL is now my daily. And then my lowering springs, although they provide an aggressive lowered stance and lowered center of gravity for toge runs and spirited driving, it is getting too impractical for a daily car. And so many times that I bottom out my lower springs by hitting pothole infested streets. And luckily my oil pan and exhaust pipes are still intact, I think. But not my rack and pinion, you know that story. So for mostly practical reasons, being able to dial coilovers up and down, soft or hard, with its unparalleled adjustability, made me bite the bullet. I bought myself the BC Racing Coilovers DS Series, which they say aside from being a performance oriented set of coilovers, also have what is called a digressive piston, which allows the coilovers to make adjustments based on speed and road conditions. To quote Fitbit Industries, and I quote, during high speeds, the coilover stiffen to reduce body roll when you're taking a fast corner. But they will also soften when you encounter things like a pothole or poor road conditions to soften the ride. So bingo, pothole problem solves, right? Well, not quite. I will upload a uh, separate review video in the near future about the BCDS series coilovers and see if I just wasted money or it's money well spent. But today, let me show you how did I install this BC DS series coilovers in the 2010 Anchor TL. This is Hashra DD again here, and this is the Daily Driving Show. If this is your first time to do this as a do-it-yourselfer, I would suggest giving yourself a sufficient amount of time to do this job, maybe the weekends when you have your day off and make sure you have a backup vehicle to use because sometimes unforeseen circumstances might impede you from completing the job, like seize nuts or bolts that you're unable to remove or you strip the nut that you need and you need replacement parts. Just putting it out there, just in case. First and foremost, let's gather the tools needed. So we need the jack and jack stands. We need wheel chucks. We need a breaker bar or a tire iron, impact wrench and a torque wrench, a ratchet, a pry bar, coarse your coilovers. And then optionally, we we'll probably need to be needing a penetrating rust catalyst. So let's open the hood and let's take out those uh, plastic engine covers to expose the strut brace and the top strut nuts. Let's remove the front strut brace mounting nuts before jacking up the car. This step is not necessarily be a priority, but it will make your job easier compared to removing it when it's up on the jack. Here we need to remove 8 nuts using a 12mm socket. Also when removing the strut brace, make sure to unhook first the vacuum hose that's uh, hanging up there before removing the brace. I'm going to work on the front area first, so I'm going to raise the car with the floor jack, then lower it to two jack stands, so on one on each side, keeping the floor jack in place for added stability and safety. 
Let's remove the tires accordingly. Here's a link in your upper right hand corner for another video on how to remove tires. And I also put a link down below. On this Ford Gen TL, in order for the front strut assembly to come out, we need to remove the wheel speed sensor bracket, which is held by a 10 mil bolt right here. The damper pinch bolt, um, this we're gonna use 14 mil right here. And lastly, the damper fork mounting nut while holding the mounting bolt. Gonna use a 17 mil socket right here. You can optionally spray the nuts and bolts that you're about to remove with your rust penetrating catalyst with this PB blaster to make it easier for them to come out because they might be pretty zizzed up or rusted. Here we are removing the wheel speed sensor harness bracket mounting bolt with a 10 mil socket. In this one, we're removing the damper pinch bolt with a 14 mil socket. Lastly, remove the damper fork mounting nut with the impact wrench or a breaker bar while holding the mounting bolt with a wrench to prevent it from spinning. Uh, we use a 17mm socket for this one. Now that the uh, nut is out, Sometimes the mounting bolt doesn't come off easily. So we should support the knuckle up just a tad bit with the floor jack to decrease the tension from all the weight of the entire suspension and the knuckle assembly. And then hammer it, hammer the end of the bolt either directly or with a smaller diameter socket extension like this one on this video. Next, let's remove the floor jack that's supporting the knuckle, then remove the dumper fork from the strut and the lower arm. Applying a little downward pressure on the knuckle assembly should help release the strut from the dumper fork. Lastly, let's remove the damper mounting nuts from the top of the damper with a 14 mil socket. And make sure uh, you don't drop down the whole strut under its own weight. And then let's slide out the strut slowly.
So before installing your new set of coilovers, make sure their preload is set. Manufacturers usually set it out out of the box, so you don't have to uh, set it up yourself. You know that the preload is already set and there's no play or up and down movement with the spring when you try to uh, move it. Also, approximate the height you want for your coilover for your car by setting side by side the old strut assembly that you just removed with the new coilover. And uh, depending on what ride height you want, you can make some measurements based on the side by side height comparison. Alright, after uh, figuring out the ride height that we want with our measurements on the new coilovers, we are now going to install it in the reverse process that we took the old one out. Let's go ahead and slide in and align the coilover up towards the top mounting holes. Then while holding the coilover on one hand, let's loosely hand thread the top mounting nuts with the other hand. Or just ask someone to thread the nuts while you're holding the coilovers. Next is to loosely install the front strap brace mounting nuts. Then reinstall the damper fork over the drive shaft and onto the lower arm. After that, we can now slide in the coil over to the damper fork. Apply a little bit of a downward pressure against the hole of the lower arm or suspension, thereby making it easier for the coil over to go in. Once the base of the coil over is in the damping fork, loosely install the damper pinch bolt using a 14 mil socket. Let's connect the dumper port and the lower arm with the mounting bolt then lightly tighten the mounting nut with a 17 mil socket this time. Sometimes it is hard to uh, put in the uh, mounting bolt and um, a floor jack is actually helpful by raising the uh, lower arm a little bit to help align the mounting bolt with the holes of the uh, damper fork and the lower arm and um, adjust it accordingly. Once everything is in place, we could now tighten the dumper pinch bolt up to 36 feet pound of torque with a uh, 14 mil socket. And then next is to tighten the dumper, dumper fork mounting nut while holding the mounting bolt to 47 feet pound of torque using a 17 mil socket this time. Now we go to the top mounting nuts. Tighten the top damper mounting nuts to about 41 feet pound of torque using a 14 mil and then 16 feet pound of torque for the front strap brace mounting nuts with a 12 mil socket.
And then finally, let's install the wheel speed sensor bracket using a 10 mil and then tighten it to about 7.2 feet pound of torque. And that completes the front driver side of the coil over installation. Then let's proceed to the front passenger side and follow the same steps as we did here. So the other side is basically the same, so I'm not going to show it to you. So let's proceed actually to the rear side. Moving on to the rear, to get access to the rear strut mounting nuts, we need to remove the entire rear seat. Take note that we will remove the rear seats first before jacking up the rear of the car because it is easier this way. Um, you'll be doing a lot of movement and wiggling while removing the rear seats. And you don't want to do that while your car is up on the jacks. So to remove the rear seat, uh, press down right here and pull the clip underneath. Same is true on this side, press down, then pull, then boom, it's out. Next is to remove these bolts right here, four of them using a uh, 10 mil socket. So once they're out, undo and unhook your seat belts. Lift the whole rear seat up while applying front pressure towards it. And at the same time, wiggle the whole seat while lifting it up. Now finally, it's unhooked. We can now carefully remove it from the car. And uh, our rear top strut mounting nuts are now accessible. Let's properly raise the rear of the car up with a floor jack, then uh, lower them on jack stands while leaving the floor jack in there as a backup with the wheel chucks in place. Let's remove the rear wheels. And let me emphasize that there are actually two ways of removing the old strut. One is to remove the brake post bracket mounting nuts. Um, is it easy? Not really, because there's an end link stabilizer connected with the brake hose bracket. That's why it is a pain to take off. The trick to that is to support the knuckle assembly with the floor jack and raise it up quite a bit to ease the removal of that bracket. If that bracket is giving you a hard time, there's another way. So the second way of doing this is to unbolt the rear sway bars on both sides. Like this, there's two bolts on each side. You need a 12 mil socket to remove it. Once both sides are unbolted, we can now remove the rear top strut nuts with a 14 mil socket. After that, the next one will be to remove the strut lower mounting bolt using a 17 mil socket. Let's remove the old strut by using a pry bar as a lever, applying upward pressure at the bottom of the strut to fish it out. And at the same time, putting a downward pressure against the whole knuckle and lower arm assembly.
So once it's out, like Chris Fix always say, out with the old and in with the new. Like the front set of coilovers, set the old rear struts with the new rear coilover side by side and make measurements to determine the approximate ride height of your choice and adjust accordingly. Also make sure the preload is set. The spring should sit tight with no up and down play. Let's also take this opportunity to install the rear damping adjustment extenders before installing your coilovers. As the name implies, this will be connected to your damping dials and will be sticking out at the back of your rear seats for you to adjust if need be. You don't have to remove your rear seats anymore to do that, which we all know it's too painful to remove, at least to my experience. And how about you? What part of this installation made you sweat like a pig and curse like there's no tomorrow? I'm sure you do. But if you have, put it down in the comments below and see if you guys have the same difficulties. So, to finish up this installation, let's do everything in reverse way of removal. Let's go ahead and slide in and align the uh, rear coilovers up towards the top mounting holes and uh, applying a little bit of a downward pressure towards the suspension or knuckle assembly. There you go. That's one. Okay. Ask someone to thread the nuts loosely while you're holding the coilovers. It is heavy. Well, the old one is heavy. Place a floor jack under the lower arm and raise the suspension to load it with the vehicle's weight to help align the mounting bolt with the holes of the coilover and the lower arm. And you could just adjust it accordingly. Now we're ready to tighten the bolt to spec with 47 feet pound of torque using a 17 mil socket. Remember the rear coilovers came with its own nut because the uh, OEM strut or the old one snut is built in. So next is to tighten the top strut nuts to about 41 feet pound of torque using a 14 mil socket. Remember you must install the other side of the rear coilover first before bolting up the sway bar. So once the once both rear coilovers are installed we could now thread and tighten up the sway bar nuts to about 16 feet pound of torque using a 12 mil socket. Let's go ahead and reinstall the tires and lower your car from the jack and jack stands. So check now how your ride look. Are you satisfied with the ride height in the front and the rear? If you don't, just raise the car up again and adjust it the way you want it. Then if you're satisfied with the ride height, you could test drive your car, listen to any suspension noise if there is, and feel if it's the right stiffness or softness, and you could just adjust it accordingly to your liking. That's the beauty of adjustable coilovers, ladies and gentlemen. And now you're ready to send your car to the alignment shop. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and uh, possibly subscribe to help us make more videos like this one. And next on Daily Driving, um, we're going to show you a test drive review on this uh, BC Racing Callovers DS Series. Till next time.